<clears throat> Hello, my name is I'm here to talk about the truth about what really went down in Louisiana when I was down there with my boy Sawyer and we were filming a movie and you know some things happened down there and I think it's important that you understand and you know the truth about what went down that day in Louisiana. So I'm gonna begin the story. It was a long day of shooting with my boy Sawyer and you know it's like we decided to go back to the hotel. You hear some rustling inside the hotel room and I'm like oh my god. What if this was that moment in the movie when there's people in the hotel room and they start shooting at us right as we're about to go through the door? And it was like, oh, that's only a movie thing. That doesn't happen in real life. So listen here. Kind of slowly, like, push the door open. Immediately as I open the door, no sound. Just, we kind of tiptoe our way and we hear some rustling because we had this, like, suite. So there's a little hallway and there's another room. There was something dangerous going on with dangerous people in the other room. It was just like, I didn't understand the language. It didn't sound good. Sawyer was like, listen, you go check it out. I'm like, oh. I've done this before. I'm like, I start tiptoeing down the hallway and stuff like that, and me, <laughs> bullets! Yep. Bullets. Sawyer knew it. I looked down the hallway, I saw his face. I, he gave me the, oh shit, you're getting shot at look. I've seen bullets before. They came so close to my face. Period. And I just took cover immediately, because I had seen in the movies, if you're shot at, take cover. And I was like, <sighs> I can hear them approaching me. The guy comes. I, with my eyes closed, I could just hear him approaching. I could hear that there was a gun right here, and I went... <sighs> boom, boom! Shot him in the chest twice! He was down for the count. Shot the other guy in the chest twice. Boom! Just two guys, that was it. Sawyer comes running down, he's like, oh my god, that was insane. I tried to get information from the one guy that was kind of dead. We thought he was dead, but he was coming back to life real quick. I was like, tell us who sent you. In a nutshell, in general, tell us who sent you. <laughs> because I'm a little concerned here. Blood started coming out of his mouth, and he's like... <clears throat> He started transforming, these wings started ripping out of his back. Fresh wings with like amniotic fluid dripping off of them. Bust through the glass, takes off. Sawyer so and I look at each other. I need a coffee at this point. I'm keeping my cool. I'm like, okay, let's get down to business. Check one of the dude's wallets. Well, there's only one left because the other flew out the fucking window. I checked the guy's wallet, a couple dollars in there. I'm gonna save that for coffee later. There was also a business card in there. And that business card said, uh, something uh, incorporated, can't remember the company. So Sawyer and I look it up on Google, do that research, scrolling through the pages uh, like they do in the movies. We're like, what's this? Like clicking on stuff? We're like, let's go there. So we go there, it's this tall corporate building. Uh, there's no reason that we're doing this. Honestly, most people would have just sort of called the cops and went to a different hotel, but that's not how we roll. The bottom line in general is if you fuck with us, we fuck with you twice as hard. And that's the fact of the matter. So we're in this Ford Focus, just doped out in gear. First of all, we need to be prepared for demons because that shit back at the hotel room was absurd. Here's the deal. We go up, place a couple C4s on the door. Boom, smoke cloud. Rains, gunfire, just a storm of hell coming out the door. We knew that this was gonna happen because we watched the movies. We wait for everybody to reload. Quiet for a few seconds, dust settles, in slow motion. We both just go. It was quiet for a few seconds. I looked over at Sora. We knew that we had done a little bit of damage. In a nutshell, there were a couple people dead. Anyways, go through the dusty hallway, kind of make sure everybody's just kind of sleeping permanently. There's just two floors. We're like, oh God, stairs. We go up the stairs. I hear a familiar voice, very familiar voice, talking up the stairs and he's like, I don't care what it takes, I want him dead. Sorry, who was it? It was none other than the Easter Bunny. Now you're wondering, the Easter Bunny, that's ridiculous. And that's exactly what we thought at the moment. The reason being is because when I was a child, I had gotten this really girly basket for Easter one year. This is true, I was in Kentucky, I had Easter in Kentucky with my uncle. I got a girly Easter basket, 
I mean, I'm a trained killer. So you don't give that shit to me as a 10 year old. I had a big problem with that. And I said the Easter Bunny fucked up. And I said specifically, I could do a better job than the Easter Bunny. Apparently this is what that was about a couple 15 years later. I could hear him and he was like, we knew that this is what it was gonna come down to. I knew the Easter Bunny wasn't gonna kill me when I walked in that room. I told Sawyer, I said, hey, just have my back. Listen, and if I don't come back out of here alive, I want you to know that I think the Parallax theory is gonna do great. I would have loved to be the lead in all your films in the future. Yes, maybe I did think I was the future or DiCaprio or, you know, Johnny Depp, but I have some loose ends to settle, and if I die because of these loose ends, then, you know, so be it. Walk in, and the Easter Bunny's like, hmm, hmm, ah, I remember you. And I walk in like this, and I'm like, huh, yeah, I remember you. Funny. You gave me that shit back when I was 10 years old, didn't you? That girly shit. A real cute. Funny. You really thought that you had power in my life, didn't you? And he said, I was just trying to open your mind and say, hey, you know, it doesn't just have to be boys' toys. It doesn't just have to be boys' toys. <laughs> but uh, he's like, this is all just one big misunderstanding, kiddo. He had a cigar in his mouth. This is all just one big misunderstanding. And I said, do you want to see a misunderstanding? Boom! shot him. I shot him in the chest. He was not happy about that. Shot him in the chest down the throat. Easter Bunny does the Easter Bunny thing. He like sort of hops but wobbles. <laughs> kind of fell over a little bit. I felt a little bad because I at this point I kind of understood that he had good intentions and it was just a big misunderstanding. He's just a rabbit. Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. He did a trick on the wrong kid. He was a little unhappy. He was a little scared. He just said, he told me while he was dying, he just wanted to change the world in a positive way. And that's when I realized I had made a big mistake. Um, I apologized to him. Um, I'm a murderer. That makes me a murderer, doesn't it? I literally just went into this guy's life and just killed him. But hey, it's the burden of the bunny, right? Moral of the story is, uh, is uh guys look my shirt is a monkey riding a bicycle on a banana i thought you needed to know that i want to thank story hartman for backing me up in those situations i want to thank you for listening to the story please like this if it made you feel any sort of emotion let me know in the comments below what would you have done differently how would you have handled the situation differently because i think that i did the best that i could have done and I'm making videos every Saturday and every Thursday and Saturday yeah yeah praise <laughs>